Hey Foundry Groups, it's Chantel with your Groups Insider Information. As you know, we've been highlighting our different ministry partners and missionaries who we support. During the month of May, we also want to give you a larger view of missionaries by inviting World Vision and Compassion International to come share with us a little more of their vision and how we can partner better with them. We also have some exciting staff updates for you. We want to extend a warm welcome to three new faces on our team, starting with Dawn Henneveld, who will be our new nursery coordinator and offering administrative support, Chris Cowling, who will be owning all aspects of CM Monday worship service and venue, and also Kendra Loy, who will be helping out as our HR coordinator. We're so excited to have you on our team. Hey, Foundry Groups, welcome back. Um, let's take a quick look right now at what we talked about this past week, Sunday. We talked about how the phrase, seeing is believing, uh, doesn't quite cover the Christian life. But we realized through the conversion of Saul, who became Paul, that actually believing, that is truly seeing. When we believe, we truly see. To the outside world, there were some things that people saw that were evidence of people being changed. These fumbling, once afraid fishermen were now bold. They were thoroughly equipped and full of wisdom. Acts 4.13 says that now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. They recognized they had been with Jesus. I love that. It didn't say they recognized they had gone to school. They had been with Jesus. It wasn't just Peter and John who displayed the light of Christ to those around them. When Stephen spoke boldly to the Sanhedrin, that Jew Jewish re uh, ruling council, what we know is they couldn't help but notice, right? It says this in Acts 6, 15, gazing at him, Stephen, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So we understand that, um, that there was this light of Christ that is displayed through this. The real difference in these new Christians is that they had been given a new spirit, new sight. They now could see what truly mattered because they believed they could see clearly. Even as the, uh, he was murdered, Stephen actually could see what truly mattered. It's amazing what he says because Stephen saw Jesus. This is what it says in um, Acts chapter 7 verse 55. But he full of the Holy Spirit, gazed, speaking of Stephen, gazed into heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. By believing he was now fully seeing the story of Stephen, the first martyr, the one who, when he was martyred, we are first introduced to Saul, who would become Paul. Saul was a strict, successful Jew who obeyed all the laws and hated Christians. He oversaw the arrest, persecution, and even death of many Christians. But Saul was blindly confident. He had everything totally wrong in his assumptions, even in his learning. He was blinded by a bright light as he walked or as he went to Damascus to, to arrest Christians. He was blinded by a light. He was carrying orders from the chief priest to arrest these Christians. He falls off his horse and Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you? He doesn't even know who he's speaking to. Who are you, Lord? He says, and Jesus says, I am am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Jesus then sends a man who uh, to Jesus sent Paul, forgive me, um, to stay in the man, the house of a man named Judas, who lived on St Straight Street. Then Jesus sent another man, Ananias, to go and pray for Paul. And Ananias um, was somewhat reluctant and frightened because he knew Paul by his reputation, but Ananias obeyed. Saul was healed, filled with the Holy Spirit, and baptized. And then we understand this, that believing, coming to believe in Jesus is truly seeing. Saul thought he saw clearly until he was, he was converted to belief in Jesus Christ. He was cer certain of what good and right was, but he was wrong. He was sure with his own eyes until he met Jesus, the same eyes he looked on Stephen as he martyred him and celebrated the death of the first Christian martyr. 
Paul thought he was doing right. We cannot trust our own eyes, friends. We must rely on the Holy Spirit to give us new eyes and believe, believe so that we can see clearly. At this time, I'm gonna hand it off to Chantel because she's a Packers fan. I would throw it to her, but we all know they can't catch. Hand it off to you, Chantel. We are back with another week of Foundry content. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll start with our icebreaker. Recall a time when you said that you had to see something in order to believe it. First thing that comes to mind for me is when my kids tell me that the room is clean. Go ahead and discuss. All right, group, go ahead and get your Bibles out and let's volunteer someone very brave to read through the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. Now that we've read through that great chunk of scripture, go ahead and discuss what stood out to you and why. For me, um, I always just marvel at the presence of the Holy Spirit at exactly the right moment. It was like the Lord knew to send that advocate. Right when they started questioning Peter and John, it just reminds what a perfect helper we have in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and discuss it together. Peter and John were, by the world standards, not impressive people. Scripture tells us in verse 13 that they were unschooled and ordinary. How does verse 13 relate to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7? And how does this piece of Scripture speak to you? All right, keep your Bibles out. We're going to dive back into the book of Acts. Check out chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What kind of role was Stephen chosen for? Why were seven people chosen for that role? How did Stephen's role aid the disciples and their mission? And why were some so against Stephen? I wonder if any of you have ever been faced with a situation like this. Talk about it with your group and discuss how it happened and what the result was. Even though teaching the word was not Stephen's primary role, he still knew it. He kept it in his heart. In chapter 7, Stephen goes on to give a beautiful, powerful message proclaiming who Jesus is. He starts with Abraham and he goes all the way back through the Old Testament to all the way to Solomon. And he said this, You stiff-necked people, your hearts and your ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. Those are some pretty heavy and powerful accusations coming from Stephen to these very holy and wise people. Why or how do you think that he was so bold in this moment? How did he have the courage to speak like that? Have you ever said something to the effect of, I'm not a pastor, so I don't really need to know the Bible that well or hide it really in my heart? Would Stephen's story today contradict you thinking that way? At the end of the message, Eric asks us about um, several different characters. How did you answer these questions? Are you Peter and John? Do you, people recognize that you have been with Jesus and that you've rooted your life in him? It reminds me of a popular song uh, from a few years back by Sidewalk Prophets. It's called Live Like That. 
If you haven't heard it, I encourage you to play it. But it reminds me of some of the lyrics in there where it talks about, um, I let everything that I say and do point to you. It goes on to ask a question, when people pass by, even if they don't know my name, is there evidence that I've been changed? When they see me, do they see you? I encourage you to continue to spend time with Jesus because you love him and allow your life to point to him when people pass by you. Are you a Stephen? Do people see the light and grace of Jesus reflecting from you? Continue to serve and forgive just as Christ has shown us. Those who live and serve with this level of humility and love that Christ demonstrated will shine among them like the stars in the sky. Or are you Saul? Have you trusted in your own eyes and not realized that you are actually spiritually blind? I encourage you to repent just as Saul did. Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? When Paul recounts the story um, in Acts 20, we read that he um, answered Jesus, what should I do, Lord? Be open to his leading and his direction over your life and desire to see with God's eyes. And lastly, are you Ananias? Have you been given a vision by God that is frightening? Maybe you want to avoid it at all costs, but you must Take it and believe in faith. I encourage you as a group to dive deeper into these characters, discuss what aspects of your life you might see reflected in them. Please go around the room, share your prayer requests. And if you have time, go into that diving deeper section. Um, it's packed with so much truth and goodness from God's word. And as always, thanks for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your week. See you soon.